On this episode of What's Going On With Shipping, Allianz has issued their safety and shipping review for 2022. I am your host, Sal McCoglana, welcoming this episode of What's Going On With Shipping. So I've been told this year that I have a face for maritime disasters. In other words, whenever there's a maritime disaster, people send, tend to see me, which is ironically a very similar thing to a professor I had at New York Maritime when I was getting my merchant marine license told me. I think it was for different reasons. But today what I want to do is take a look at this recent report issued by Allianz on trends and developments in shipping losses, risk challenges, and safety out there. This report is really anticipated every year, and it is a great one for giving you a snapshot on risks and safety and also key issues developing in the maritime sector. Before we do, if you hadn't done so yet, please subscribe to the channel, hit the bell to be alerted about new videos. All right, the report. So a couple of th key things right from the introduction of this report. And of course, I'll have the links to the report's website and you can download a hard copy of the report if you like a PDF from the site. So one of the big things is how much safer shipping has become over the years. As the report states, about 90% of world trade is carried by ships, but is way go back to the early 1990s, we were losing over 200 ships a year, but that has dropped to around 50 to 75 ships over the past four years. And in terms of positive safety trends in 2021, 54 ships were lost compared with 65 a year earlier. And they talk about hotspots, South China, Indochina, Indonesia, and Philippines is the main global loss hotspots, accounting for a one in five losses. And the chart here really gives you a good idea about that. 892 ships lost over 10 years, 54 in the previous year. That's a 57% decline over the, in the decade. 27 cargo ships lost in 2021, representing 50% of all vessel losses with 3,000 shipping accidents. December and May are the most frequent months for losses. 13 minimum number total of total loss minimum number of total losses where extreme weather was reported as a factor getting into the specifics of how vessels were lost of half the vessels lost in 2021 cargo vessels accounted for 27 of those foundering were the main cause of total losses across all vessel types accounting for around 60% 32 fire and explosion ranked second 15% with eight vessels lost and then machinery damage and failure third. Extreme weather was reported as being a factor in at least 13 losses during 2021. Collectively, foundering 52%, groundings 18%, fire explosions 13% are the top three causes of total losses over the past decade, accounting for more than 80% of the 892 reported losses. Uh, the Eastern Mediterranean Black Sea region is the location of the most shipping incidents over the past decade, accounting for 18%. This graph shows you total shipping losses by year of vessels over 100 gross tons. And as we mentioned before, a 57% decrease over the decade. Go back to 2012, 127 ships lost, and that has continually dropped except for a slight uptick there after 2014, and then it continued its downward trend. If you look by regions again in 2021, the region that has the most is the South China, Indochina, Indonesia, Philippine region. And that's true over the decade when you look at 892 ship losses over the decade versus just 54 for last year. Uh, I want to go into the four featured articles they have here, and I'll break the video up so you can go right to these. But the report focuses on four key areas. And each of these areas were identified as important or trends in the past year and potentially the upcoming year. So when we look at the first of these expert articles, the impact of Ukraine war on global shipping, uh, you see a couple of key things here. And again, I'm just going to highlight what I think are some of the most important aspects here. The war has caused widespread disruption to global shipping which we already know about. But this quote here by Captain Rahul Kanana, the global head of risk marine risk consulting. Despite the tragic situation in Ukraine and the threat to seafarers caught up in the conflict, the direct impact on shipping from the war in Ukraine has so far been largely contained to the Black Sea. Completely accurate assessment, in my opinion. However, the war is creating an additional burden on the maritime industry, 
which is already dealing with ongoing supply chain disruptions, port congestion, and a crew crisis caused by the pandemic. Goes on to say, trade with Russia and Ukraine will suffer, adding to the already strained global supply chains. Longer term sanctions and a reduction in trade with Russia could result in a redrawing of some supply lines of some supply chains and trade routes. But all this takes time and comes at a cost. And coming down here, they focus on a couple of key topics. So the first one here, the vessel and crew trapped in a war zone. At the beginning of April, 2022, numerous merchant vessels were trapped in the Ukrainian ports, about 94 vessels with 2000 seafarers along the Black Sea and the Sea of Azov. While vessels in the wider region were at risk for sea mines, rocket attacks and the threat of detention. I just talked about this in the fourth story of this week's What the Ship and the dangers of the Black Sea. Uh, goes on here, as of April 20th, 84 merchant ships remain with nearly 500 seafarers on board. An estimated 1,500 seafarers have so far been repatriated. NATO issued a warning in April 2022 that the ongoing risk of collateral damage or direct hits on merchant shipping in the Black Sea was high. At least eight merchant ships were attacked in Ukrainian ports in the Black Sea. Three cargo ships, the Japanese-owned Namora Queen, Lord Nelson, and Helt, were attacked in the Black Sea, according to the Panama Maritime Authority. The Helt sank off the coast of Odessa, having likely struck a mine, killing two crew. The sinking came shortly after a Bangladesh cargo ship was attacked in the Ukrainian port of Olivia, uh, killing one of its crew members. And it continues on here with some other stories. It jumps here, potential marine claims and coverage issues. Marine insurance losses from the war in Ukraine are currently limited, although the conflict is likely to create uncertainty and legal questions for affected hull and cargo policies. Certain claims have to be denied under sanctions and war clauses. This goes to a uh, expert definition by Justice Heinrich, global product leader, Marine Hull, at Allianz, we can predict the various scenarios under war cover, but it is much harder to predict how non-war losses could develop for vessels trapped in Ukrainian ports in the Black Sea. There are potential issues around safe navigation, crew, maintenance, and salvage for these ships if they are unable to leave. And this image here is really a haunting one. This is the port of Mariupol that has been in the news so much recently. The conflict may exasperate crew shortages. The Ukraine invasion also has ramifications for the global maritime workforce. Jump down here a bit. A significant portion of the world's 1.89 million seafarers originate from Russia and Ukraine. According to the International Chamber of Shipping, Russian seafarers account for just over 10% of the shipping total workforce, while a further 4% are from Ukraine. In the last section here, Evolving sanctions regime increases compliance burden. The range of sanctions against Russia interests presents a sizable compliance challenge. We're seeing that in the news with issues like economic sanctions against the importation of Russian oil or even allowing Russian money connected ships into ports. This is going to create a additional burden on the movement of cargo. And we just saw an example of this with a Russian ship that was sailing to Egypt with a load of grain on board. However, the Ukrainian government protested that because the cargo was believed to be from Ukraine itself, that the Russians stole the Ukrainian grain, put it on this Russian vessel, and was going to sell it in Egypt. Uh, the vessel has since diverted to Syria, where it is currently unloading at this time. All right, let's go to the second story. Story two, lost drivers in the shipping industry, larger vessels. So this story deals with the issue of the growth of vessels. Large vessels continue to drive ever higher exposures with fires, container, and carrier losses. Hazardous cargo, costlier salvage operations, and issues with port of refuge leading to oversized losses and general average becomes more frequent. Just saw this with Everforward in the Chesapeake Bay, but in here they're talking about examples such as the car carrier Felicity Ace, container ship Express Pearl, the car carrier Al Salami 6, Ever Forward, Ever Given, and just a plethora of vessels here and a great graphic that shows you the growth of container ships from 1968 all the way up to 2006. And I would argue that this is even an outdated graphic because Emma Maersk at 11,000 TEU is half the size 
of current vessels out there. This goes on here. Cargo fires, a burning issue for shipping. Fire in large vessels remains a key factor of major losses requiring urgent action to improve vessel safety. Felicity Ace, should be Ace, not Age, beginning in February 2022, led to the vessel sinking the Atlantic Ocean along with a cargo of 4,000 vehicles. The incident occurred less than a year after a fire led to the sinking of a large container ship, Express Pearl, in May 2021 off Sri Lanka that actually involved uh, that fire actually had to deal with the fact that the crew was unable to get that ship a refuge port. They were dealing with fires earlier. No port would take them in India or um, in Oman. And instead they went to Sri Lanka, the vessel caught fire again, and you have a huge environmental incident. No let up in container ship fire frequency. Fire on board large container ships are a top concern for marine insurers as a growing number of incidents continue to generate large losses. You have the Yanatan Express back in 2019, Maersk Hanum in 2018, but most recently in October of 2021, the Zim Kingston, which we covered on the channel quite extensively. In 2021, we had a huge fire and explosion in the port of Jebel Ali in Dubai. And what we're seeing here is really the danger of these type explosions. Add to it, cargo misdeclaration is at the heart of the problem. Addressing a root cause of fires on board container ships is the key to solving the problems. Tracking and identifying what is in containers is essential. It says down here, it's estimated that 10% of all containers loaded on board ships contain declared dangerous cargo. However, 5% of container ships consist of undeclared dangerous goods. For example, this would equate to 1,000 TEUs or more of undeclared dangerous cargo on board a 24,000 TEU ship. And we just saw several shipping lines, one high in particular was, uh, excuse me, it was Yang Min. Yang Min announcing that they're going to have penalties uh, against shippers if they misdeclare their cargo. Car carriers now a major cause of loss. Talked about this in What the Ship the other day. Roll on roll off carriers are back in the spotlight following the total loss of Felicity 8s. And here you see a list of vessels that were, have been lost since 2015 with the Ho Osaka all the way up to the Al Salami 6. Again, we're, we're seeing this happen quite a bit with car carriers. The most recent one for us beyond Felicity Ace was the Golden Ray down in Brunswick, Georgia. Lithium batteries, an emerging risk for shippers. Uh, we're seeing these in the number of fires. The issue raises questions for the design and firefighting capabilities of roll-on, roll-off ships carrying electrical vehicles as well as the declaration stowage and packing of battery container cargoes. Batteries are not only a potential cause of fire, they also aggravate the problem. I have dealt with car battery fires as a firefighter. And once they ignite and once they burst into flame and they start dumping their power, nothing in the world is gonna put them out. They're gonna burn. Next section, general average, an increasingly frequent severity event. Uh, GA was once uncommon, but with larger container ships, cargo interests are increasingly being hit. Uh, goes on down here, GA was declared on Ever Given. Uh, we goes on here, was also declared following separate incidents of engine fires on the container ship NYK Delphius, the Northern Jupiter in 2021, the Maers Hanum uh, back in March of 2018, Yanatan Express in 2019, and we know Ever Forward has also declared that. General average for the Ever Given is likely to end up around 25 to 30 percent, but the loss could have been much higher. Next section, salvage and wreck removal costs drive large losses. The rising cost of salvage and wreck removal, a consequence of the increased size of vessels and growing environmental, social, and governance concerns is fast becoming a critical issue for insurers. Golden Ray, which capsized at Brunswick in 2019, took almost two years and cost in excess of $800 million, second only to Costa Concordia, which cost over a billion dollars. Uh, car container ship Rena, which grounded off New Zealand in 2011, took four years to clean up at a cost of $500 million. And again, this is why you're seeing those general average claims. As vessels get bigger, salvage and uh, removal of the vessels becomes much more difficult. Talked about port of refuge. Review needed. Uh, port states and other stakeholders must find ways to accommodate vessels in distress. After a number of fires that left container vessels struggling to find Refuge. In the case of Express Pearl, the inability to discharge hazardous cargo contributed to the total loss of the vessel. 
along with MSC Flamania, Maersk Hanum, and Yanitan Express, all had to wait several months before they were granted refuge and their cargo could be safely discharged. We saw the exact opposite, by the way, in Canada with the Zim Kingston. Is collapsing containers, the size of vessels may be contributing to a string of container stack collapses and the growing number of containers damaged at sea. In March 2020, 22, excuse me, the container ship Dyros lost about 90 containers and saw another 100 damaged. In January 2022, Madrid Bridge lost about 60 and another 80 collapsed. In October of 2021, Zim Kingston uh, suffered a huge loss, including fires, and around 3,500 containers were lost in four separate incidents over a three-month period from late 2020 to early 2021, with 1,800 lost on ONE Apis, another thousand lost on Maersk Essen and Maersk Eindhoven. And these incidents occurred in rough seas while the vessels were en route from China to ports on the West Coast. The loss of so many, so many containers in such a short period of time was unprecedented compared with an annual average of 1,382 a year, according to the World Shipping Council. Finally, improvements to investigation reports needed. Many accident investigation reports take too long to produce, meaning valuable lessons from shipping accidents are not being learned. And again, I have said this repeatedly regarding the grounding of Maersk, uh, of, excuse me, of uh, grounding of Everforward in the Chesapeake. Why is it we're not hearing more from the NTSB and the Coast Guard on this issue? If it's mechanical, we should know it's mechanical and they should come out with that. If it's crew, either the pilot or the ship's crew, that needs to be addressed because that could be a systemic problem that's occurring right now and that issue needs to be fixed. Same thing, took two years for the report on Golden Ray to come out on her capsizing and I still don't think enough has been done to prevent a similar occurrence from happening in the future. All right, let's look at the third article in this report. The third expert risk article deals with the impact of COVID crew and congestion on the shipping industry. So post-pandemic world brings heightened risk for shipping. While the COVID-19 pandemic resulted in a few direct claims for the marine insurance sector, the impact on the welfare of the crews and the boom in shipping and port congestion exas exasperated by the Ukraine invasion raises potential safety concerns. If you haven't looked at my videos I've done with Madeline Walchko on restricted to ship, her story about the motor vessel President Wilson stuck in a, sh in a Shanghai ship shipyard during the lockdowns there currently, you should really take a moment and go take a look at that. Crew crisis, a skilled shortage in the making. Seafarers were the unsung heroes of the pandemic, keeping the world supplied with food, energy, raw materials, and manufactured goods. Yet COVID-19 and now Russia's invasion of Ukraine has taken its toll on the industry work. At its peak in 2020, it was thought that up to 400,000 seafarers were unable to be repatriated, falling to 200,000 in 2021. Those issues are key because once those mariners were able to get off the vessels, many of them probably decided not to come back. And those that were supposed to come out for reliefs found other jobs. That exasperates the crewing issue. And that means going forward, it may be more difficult to find crews. Add this during March and April of 2022, a number of vessels owned by P&O ferries were retained, uh, detained by UK authorities over safety concerns including crew familiarization and training. The operator had previously made over 800 crew redundant and replaced them with lower paid workers. P&O Ferries, in the story I did, fired their crews, their UK-based crews, and replaced them with Indian crews. And there was a huge backlash over that for obvious reasons. Higher value conversions in older vessels increase exposure. The economic rebound from COVID lockdowns created a boom time for shipping with huge increases in charter and freight rates. While higher rates are positive for many in the industry's finances, changing the use of vessels to take advantage of this and extending the working life of ships raises flags for underwriters. Yeah, we are keeping vessels out much longer than they should be. The value of a five-year-old Panamax box ship more than tripled from 22 million in January, 2020 to 82 million a year later. Last year also saw record values for bulkers. And what we're seeing is a lot older ships, ships that were slated to be retired, still being used. Port congestion and commercial pressures heighten risk. COVID-19 measures in China, a surge in consumer demand, and the invasion of Ukraine have all been factors on ongoing unprecedented port congestion. 
Congestion at the ports of LA and Long Beach reached record levels in November 2021 with 116 container ships either in port or at anchor, while in March 2022, Los Angeles recorded its third busiest month ever. At the same time, repeated outbreaks in China resulted in a staggering lockdown of Shanghai and Russia's invasion of Ukraine is compounding ongoing supply demand issues for shipping. Next story, ports and shipping face heightened cyber threat. The shipping industry continues to fall victim to cyber attacks. In February 2022, a container terminal in India was hit by a ransomware attack. And we have seen these throughout the industry, the most famous being the Maersk Nanpietya virus hit back in 2017 that shut Maersk down for weeks. All right, that was story number three. Last story examines climate change in the shipping industry and talks about these transition problems. The decarbonization of the industry will require big investments in green technology and alternative fuels. It's essential that the transition to low carbon shipping does not create new risks with unintended consequences. If you look at what's going on right now, all these major shipping companies are trying to figure out the best way to shift over to this new form of propulsion. The IMO estimates that the industry's greenhouse gas emissions grew by 10% between 2012 and 2018. In 2018, the IMO called for a 40% cut in greenhouse gas emissions across the fleet by 2030, and at least 50% by 2050, with calls even going higher than that now. The fuel industry changed. The introduction of low carbon alternative fuels also brings a number of risks. Growing number of vessels are being built or converted to run on LNG and biofuel. Uh, Maersk, for example, is to run eight methanol-powered container ships by 2024. Alternative fuels are largely untested over the long term. And that's a big question, is how well do these fuels work in the future? So four major stories identified in the report. Each of them, I think, are significant for contributing to the safety of shipping going forward in 2022. And what is the big issues looming on the uh, on the horizon? They also include here 14 other kind of hot topics and news, everything from safety and uh, COVID factors, challenges in the shipping sector, COVID-19 related claims, autonomous shipping, uh, a snapshot at uh, uh, this unique dry dock, the Dormac floating dr dry dock, COVID crew and congestion, this technical excellence, War insurance, what's it good for? Great uh, play on music right there, I like that. Suez Canal blockage, the lessons to be le uh, learned from the ever given. And then safety and shipping review environment, talks about the struggle with container ship fires. Gulf of Guinea, this is the west coast of Africa and seeing the ro uh, rise of piracy on the west coast. The new global risk dialogue edition, uh, and then uh, also here, container ship fire issues continue to burn and climate challenges in the shipping industry. So if you have not had your chance to read your report or better yet to download the copy of your report, you should. It's some great reading, some great resources. Of course, I have it linked into the show notes. You can download it and look at those articles yourself. So hope you enjoyed this episode of what's going on with shipping. If you did, take a moment, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so you'll be alerted about new videos as they come out. Leave a comment, give it a thumbs up, share it across social media. And if you can, head on over to our Patreon page and support what's going on with shipping. It's your contributions that allow me to bring this channel to you and talk about maritime shipping. So until the next channel, uh, next channel, our next episode, this is Sal signing off. <laughs>